for you, too? I never met anybody as hungry as you are. It's bad. Like you were hungry from the day you were born. Kathy, don't cut me off. There's a, there's a charge between us. Don't bug it. For me, too. Kathy, you got the touch. You turn the lights on for me, Kathy. Kathy, honey, marry me. Will dance instructors Mr. Alton Kirk and Miss Allen report, please? Your dancing partners have arrived. Johnny, they're calling us. I don't care. Kathy? Johnny, it's Mr. Billig. We'll get fired. <laughs> you got me now, Kathy. To found a school right on up to high school. It was like nobody understood what was inside of me. Like I could do anything. A anything if only I'd found somebody who would have believed in me. Given me the touch. I used to think about those guys out there in their cars going to the prom out the French gardens. Back in my hometown. Guys with nothing on the ball like, like Roy Huntley. I'd think about them and I'd, I'd get the weeps. Do you understand? Huh? Ever since I met you, I haven't had the weeps once. You're giving me the touch. Mr. Alton Kirk, Miss Allen, our policy is not to keep our students waiting. Please report at once. Kathy. Johnny, money, money. More than you ever saw in your whole life, honey. How? You just marry me. It'll come just like this. I've got the touch. I always have. Don't make me beg for it, Kathy. Just say yeah. <laughs> Kiss me, hungry Johnny. The stories that shock a nation, move them, make them laugh, begin here. Like this one. I'm Paul Stewart. This is the story which reporter Wallace Bean of the Alexandria Daily Town Talk first treated with a casual shrug. A small story, a run-of-the-mill story, it seemed to him. But in a few hours, he was to realize with horror that somebody was holding up a mirror to his own life, his own generation. They're rolling. The presses are rolling on deadline. <laughs> lucky, lucky, Johnny. How about us? Seventeen hundred dollars in three days. How does it feel being in your hometown? It feels like a jet that leaves no trail, honey. Like I got neon lights inside of me. Got something of my own. For the first time in my life. And it turns out to be Aladdin's lamp. And all I've got to do is, is rub it gently. You want to go to a movie before we check out? Check out? I don't want to check out yet. We got it, honey. Not yet. Three days in Alexandra, $1,700. Then Miami, Florida, here we come. Wait a minute. Huh? I got something for you. Hey. Close your eyes and make a wish. <laughs> Open sesame. You're going to have lunch or something with Roy Huntley. And this is what you're going to wear to make his eyes pop. Johnny Altenkirk. The boy he called the creep of the class. In the best hotel in town, in the hottest clothes, and on his way to Miami, Florida. Stand up and put it on. Hey. Oh. How, how do I look? Like you're gonna make Roy Huntley eat his heart out. Honey. When I left this town, I could have fit under the flattest rock in the park. When I go this time, I'm going to be 20 feet tall. I'm going to count you. Johnny, hmm? how many more checks do we have left? We've got about 30. What? 
Make them out. Huh? Make them out, Johnny. Each for a hundred. Oh, Kathy, we can't. Uh, three days, our luck won't run forever, honey. They, they may be looking for you now. I won't let you. Something I need, and the next town might not be as easy as this one. Honey, we got $1,700. Anything you want. <laughs> oh, mama, mama. I can do it, Johnny. Just two more days. Fifteen more checks. Some here and some in Pineville. If anything happened to you, honey, I... Nothing can happen to me, Johnny. Nothing. You've got to believe me. What do you do to them, baby? Tell me, what do you do to them? I got a touch, Johnny. Like they're all snakes. And I got the music. You're the living end. Just two more days, Johnny. That's all I need. Here. Lucky, lucky, Johnny. Be awful if I left you, wouldn't it, Johnny? Still busy. Come on, Wally, that's a place for you, tired of. I told you I wouldn't write that story till you tell me, so humor me a dime's worth. Come on, Roy, shake that dame off your wire. How do you know it's a girl he's talking to? Roy Huntley? Huh? Wouldn't be caught dead talking to a man unless he's tapping his father for more money. Hello, Wally. Hello, Ray. Nice to rent. Anything, Captain? Not yet. I got a hunch maybe they left town. They? You don't think the girl's been working alone? Her signature on the back. Different handwriting from the person who made out the check and forged Huntley's name. Oh. You know, Captain, it's embarrassing for a businessman. Uh, the whole thing, I, I mean, being taken by a girl. Yeah, I bet. Look, Captain, it just doesn't look right for a businessman to be taken. Uh, what if we dropped it? Maybe the girl's a bit lucky we can absorb the loss and just forget the whole thing. You can do as you want, but nobody's that lucky. Nobody. Quit playing detectives, Wally. What makes you so sure one of Roy Huntley's girlfriends is doing this? Pretty girl, isn't she? Huh? Your men checked out the payroll of Mr. Huntley's plant and came up with nothing, didn't they? So how do you get four and four to make nine? Look, something you didn't notice. Huntley spells his name L-E-Y. There's no E in these signatures. If it were a professional forger, one who knew Mr. Huntley had a big plant in this town, or even got his name out of the phone book, you think he'd misspell Huntley's name? It's an amateur. Roy? Wally Bean. Why don't you get off the phone sometime and quit making every dame in town? What's the matter, ma'am? You jealous? Look, I just finished with one creep, and that's my quota for tonight. Hey, you remember Johnny Alton Kirk? Two years behind us in school? I'm not interested in any Johnny Alton Kirk. I want to talk to you about the female sex, Roy. Man, I think he really flipped his beanie. All this chatter about high schools and the senior prom, the French gardens. He insisted, absolutely insisted, that I come over and see him in his hotel room. Only way I could get rid of him was to say, you know, I just might. Now, what's this about the female sex? Somebody in a tight sweater has been passing a raft of bad checks over your father's signature, Roy. Any girl you dumped recently might be doing this to get even? Look, man, I leave him happy. That's the best idea you can come up with. I better start reading an out-of-town paper. What makes him so touchy? All I did was insult him. Police. Yeah, I know your place. Liquor store right near the depot. Well, how do you know it's a bad check? No E in Huntley's name. I see. When did she come in? Half hour ago. Be right over. 
Alexander is about the same. Reckon there's enough to keep a fella busy if he moves fast enough. I guess Oklahoma City's a lot bigger. I'm gonna net it scared me half to death when I first got there. I kinda got kicked around back here, back in school. And... Oh, you know how kids are, Johnny. It just seemed like you was kind of a creep. Like a hermit. When I got my dad's studio swinging, though, boy, the money coming in. You can take the prom and the French gardens and... Were you ready for another one here? Oh, you gotta keep your nose to the grindstone. Oh, don't let him tell you anything like that about old Roy. Don't call me Casanova for nothing. Anything happens with a female sex in this town, they give old Roy a call. <laughs> okay, you think I'm blowing up a storm? You listen to me. There's a cute chick in town been passing bum checks. Who do you think the papers call? They call old Roy. They say, old Roy, we got this cute dame down here. We're gonna close in on her. But before we do, make sure we ain't poaching on your territory. We got this picture down here. Won't you have a look at it? Uh, you know, I forgot. I was supposed to pick up my plane tickets at 3 o'clock. I go with you. No, no. I'll just go down and get them. You, you, you take the rest of the bottle. I'll call you. Oh, no. I wasn't good enough for him. Me, he wouldn't date. A decent girl. But a girl like that, that's the kind he'd go out with. Now, just a minute. Now, now, now just a minute. Who, who are you talking about? Johnny Alton Kirk. Who do you think? I knew he was no good. Would somebody please explain this to me? I was at May Richards' beauty parlor where they passed one of those checks and apparently this girl came in to get a manicure. But Jeannie here recognized this boy waiting outside for her. He kept signaling for her to hurry up, hurry up. And she kept telling May what a beautiful job she did on people's hair and junk like that. And don't you think May fell for it? Cashed her check right in front of my eyes. Now, who's this Johnny Alton, Kirk? Don't you remember I told you Roy Huntley mentioned him last night. A local boy went away and came back again. Roy said he's at the Ice Hotel. Are you sure this was the same boy? You think I'd walk out of a beauty parlor looking like this and run over here? Of course I'm sure. And I hope they give a life. Well, we'll see if we can oblige you. Thank you. Helen's gonna happen to you, honey. I promise. I know. I got the touch. I'm lucky. You can get up to 15 years. How can you still talk about luck? She... What? Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. You knew it all the time, didn't you? What do you mean? What are you trying to do to her? Better worry about yourself, boy. Your wife's a juvenile. All she can get is 60 days. Now, ain't that something? wants money, but it seems to me they want other things out of life, too. Like what? I guess it sounds kind of corny, but, well, family, religion, things like that. Too bad you didn't meet my Aunt Sarah. She nipped. Nipped? Had bottles stashed all over the house. She'd wipe her mouth with a napkin after each nip. If anybody compared her to the town drunk, she'd kill them dead. She had a family, and she went to church regular. I don't get your point. My point is, she drinks the same brand as the town drunk and gets just as plastered. Only she puts on airs. What about your husband? What about him? His luck seems to have run out. You think so? Looks like it. Not to me. What makes you so sure? Because there's nothing but the weeps waiting for him if his luck runs out again.
Just saw the girl. Guard tells me something's up with Alton Kirk. What's going on? Hey. I heard you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... You know him about as well as anybody, don't you? Who? Alton Kirk. There's been a request to accept bail. Oh? Boy has to be turned loose. Says he wants to make restitution. What do you think? He has no record. No. Nope. This is the first time. On the other hand, there's somewhere between 15 and 20 counts of forgery. But how's he ever going to repay the money if he's locked up? That's for sure. What would you do? Well, if I were you, Captain, which happily I'm not, at least at this moment, it seems to me I'd... Give him a break. I would. <laughs> he's only a kid. I'll give him a couple of weeks to raise the money. A couple of weeks? I had an old aunt who used to say, you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. I guess we had the same aunt. <laughs> Lend you what? Well now, Johnny boy, I got a better idea. Why don't you just write yourself out another little old check? I know what I'll lend you. I'll lend you the key to the jail, you creep. Mr. Billy. Don't say a word. Let me get some music on first. What's the matter, Mr. Billy? I don't care to have this discussion broadcast. So you'll oblige me by keeping your voice down. Oh, Mr. Billy. Now, I must tell you, all that stuff in the papers, you're starting out this way. You're making me perspire. It's very simple, Mr. Billy. I've, I've got to make those checks good. Now, look, you work for me. How long? Six months? You scoot off with one of my best girls. You pass bad checks, ruining my name. It's been in all the papers. And now you ask me... For you know I'll make good. This is the best I can do. And I shouldn't do this. Twenty, Doc. I need over 800, Mr. Billy. You really are an exasperating person. And you're making me perspire. Now, if you don't want it, say so. You can buy yourself a Cadillac. This is the best you can do for me. Now, get out of here. You people really think you have it coming to you, don't you? Because a man by the sweat of his brow earns a decent living, you think he has an obligation to every last sniff that comes along. Now, when you go, you'll do me the courtesy of going out the back way, please. And when the lights go out, the elevator stops running, and the guard turns on some good music, I think of you out there, Lucky Lucky Johnny. And I know you're not going to let me down. Transfer, they never tell you about it. This gun is for real. Open up. Bring your keys and open up that cell. Johnny, I knew you'd come. be your monkey's uncle. Okay, I'll be right here. Look at that, will you? Three times they've been out of the county this morning, each time they come back into hot territory again. I can't think of those kids. 
Like they didn't make sense from another planet. Oh, I think they're the same as us, except they're on the edge. Now, what does that mean? In the Army, they got a way of shocking the young recruits. You know, those lectures on bad women. First, they show them a picture of her. She is on the street. Really attractive. Then they come in and give them the close-ups. I'm talking about the crazy way they're running around here on the map. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what's making them run around like that. Nothing different what's making the rest of us run around sick, except we put on airs. Money and the crazy idea that clothes and going to the right places can fill the emptiness in each and every one of us. It's like they... There was some place in that area. Yeah? At the junction of 22 and Gulf Road. Right. Of course. If I were a bit smarter, Captain, I would have realized that this boy isn't going to leave these parts until he's had all the things he missed on the night of his prom. What are you talking about? Direction of Gulf Road and number 22 is the French Gardens, Captain. The French Gardens. And they had all, they, they had Japanese lanterns. And most of all, they had the girls in the white ball gowns, you know, you know, with hoops like, you know. The guys that was wearing dinner jackets. Why? They could afford it. <laughs> they had a special orchestra. Play waltzes mainly, but the guys, they tipped them, and maybe along about two or three in the morning, <laughs> they'd be cut loose. Real jump, well. Were you wearing a white dinner jacket, Johnny? Me? Come here without you. Oh, we're here though now, ain't we? I thought this place would never open up. Kathy? Mm? You know, for a while there, I thought I'd lost it for sure. Lost what, honey? Well, what do you give me, honey? A touch. But it don't look like it now, does it? <laughs> I figured you'd come for me, Johnny. But the car. Oh, Johnny, it was the end, the floating living end. That car, honey. And you, here with <laughs> me at the French Gardens. I don't think I've ever been any further away from the weeps in my life as I... This should end. Hmm? I mean, if, if, <laughs> if uh, we had to suddenly kind of wake up now, you'd still be with me, wouldn't you, forever? Of course I would, Johnny. Why should it end? You aren't dreaming. Yes, I know, Kathy, but that night in the hotel room when you was joking about leaving me, you were just joking, weren't you? <laughs> of course I was joking, Johnny. I'm crazy about you. Hungry, lucky, Johnny. Look who's here. Those men are here again. What do I get this time, fellas? Sixty days? Not this time, honey. You had a birthday yesterday. You're a grown girl now, Kathy. The court's going to treat you that way. You'll get the book. Kathy! This is the French Gardens! What a crummy place to spend my birthday. An entire generation in one small American city followed the trial and conviction of two of their contemporaries, felt the heavy sentences almost as if they had fallen on their own shoulders. 26 years for the boy who believed that making good meant making money, and 10 years for the girl who was convinced that wishing could make it so. And when it was all over, an entire generation found itself looking into its own soul, not sure whether its own values were any different. You saw it on Deadline.